Okay. So another pupil examination. This time we're up to 4.7. Okay. So the first thing to look for is are the pupils equal in size? And again, the light's off. So this pupil over here is smaller and it's very obvious with the lights off. And if you wait, it's not slowly dilating, so it's not showing a dilation lag. Let's check the reaction to light. So this eye is responding when light is shone at this pupil. So if we shine a light at an eye and we don't get a direct response, we then look for the consensual response. So I'm looking over here as we shine the light here. So it's not an afferent defect because the response is still coming back from the other side, but it's also doesn't respond to light at either eye. So it's some sort of efferent or pupillary defect. So we've got a fixed small pupil on the right hand side, the patient's right hand side. So there's a few different causes of a small pupil. Um, the one that's probably most important to think of is going to be Horner syndrome. Um, and so what I'm thinking now is are there any other features of a Horner syndrome? So is there any ptosis? Oops. So no, there's no ptosis. The eyelids um, are the same on both sides. Um, so let's have a look at the questions. So are the pupils normal or abnormal? Well, they're abnormal. Is there an isochoria in light or dark? It's an isochoria, but it's most obvious in the dark. Does each pupil react to light? No, the right eye doesn't react to light. Is there an RAPD? No, there's not a relative afferent defect, because there was no afferent defect, because both sides, um, the afferent pathway was intact. Um, what kind of defect is this? Well, this is actually a a right-sided efferent or pupillary defect and then the question is what test could confirm this well probably let's have a look at what I've put the answer so in terms of testing here we've got this fixed small pupil a fixed meiotic pupil meiosis um, so if uh, the answer I've put here is if this is new and onset then important to consider Horner's no dilation lag no ptosis um, you could also ask the patient about sweating on that side of the face because patients lose the, the sweating or if there's any skin changes. You could also ask about any other symptoms. Have they had cancer? Have they had neck surgery? Um, more likely in this case, because there's not the other features of a Horner syndrome, would be to consider local causes. So a common cause would be previous iritis, um, which causes the pupil to stick down um, because it actually sort of glues the pupil margin to the lens. So a history of iritis, but not everyone who's got a sort of stuck down pupil has actually knows that they've had an episode of iritis. Um, but looking on a slit lamp would reveal that you'd see the adhesions. Um, the other ones, a long standing ADs tonic pupil may become a sort of fixed small pupil over the years. Um, and that's, you know, long standing ADs pupil is a small pupil, sometimes known as a little old ADs. Um, and then I've just got a link here to the bit about testing with apoclondine or cocaine, um, which is useful if you're trying to consider a Horner syndrome. Um, so it just helps you to sort of um, identify pharmacologically that they have a Horner's and then you've got a, a sort of basically you've given yourself a reason to go ahead and investigate further, normally with a CT or MRI to look at the chest and neck. Okay, hope that's going to be good.